uh, one period and uh, uncertain uh, demand. Now we will continue with the QR models or the lot size reorder point models, which is models quite similar to what we have seen with the uh, deterministic or fixed demand, but you have uncertainty. So you don't have a straight line, but you have will have some uncertainty and uh, different demands uh, going around here and get a new delivery. And then you also need to consider what we call the safety stock to account for uh, or to try to prevent the possibility of a stock out. And here we are talking about the order size, which is still denoted as the Q, the size of an order. But we are also talking about a reorder point shown here. When we have a certain amount of inventory on stock, we should place a new order, a reorder, because we have a lead time, the time between the order is placed and the delivery is, uh, is done. So then we need to decide about two variables, both the order size and the reorder point. In the deterministic situation where you have a straight line, then the reorder point is pretty easy because then you can just calculate the demand in the lead time. But now we have stochasticity, we have uncertainty, and then we need to find the optimal combination of this Q, order size, and R, reorder point. And we have some assumptions uh, also for these uh, models shown here, that uh, we have a continuously review inventory level. You know, or you should know at any time, how much you have on stock. So you can just push a button or log into a computer and see what is the level of the stock. Uh, also, you have a random demand, but the mean and the variance are constant. So you know, as we also saw in the Newsboy uh, examples, that we have a mean expected demand given as a demand in over a time unit. For example, at one year, then it's easy to calculate the demand in other time units, like month and weeks and so on. And you also know about the variance or the standard deviation. Uh, you have a positive lead time. This is the Greek letter tau, which is the time from the order is placed until it arrives. And the costs are as follows. You have the setup time each time an order is placed, or the one-time ordering cost. You have the unit order cost for each unit order, or the cost per item. You have the holding cost, which here is denoted as the H, can also be seen as the cost per item multiplied by the interest rate. And now we also need to consider what we call the penalty cost when you have an unsatisfied demand. If, in this case, you have a stock out, you will have to pay a penalty. So now we also need to include, in, in addition to the setup or ordering cost and the holding cost, you also need to include the penalty cost to find the optimal uh, strategy. So here, the, well, well, by describing the demand here, you have the what we call the response time of the system, the time that elapses from the point an order is placed until it arrives, or the, what we also call the, the lead time. And then this is what is important. What happens before the, we, we reach the reorder point here doesn't really matter, uh, at least according to the inventory strategy. Because it, was, it is what's happening from that point until the order is, uh, uh, is uh, received, it what will, uh, what will decide how much you will have left on stock or whether you will have a stock out. So let's now assume that the D will represent the demand during the lead time. And you have a probability distribution here as the capital F. And even if you have another uh, distribution, we assume that we have a normal distribution here for calculation purposes. It is possible to use <coughs> other types of statistical probability distribution, but we will focus on, on the normal distribution in this course. So 
Also, we're talking about decision variables, and uh, we will still look at the EOQ, the basic EOQ model, which is used for the, the deterministic or fixed demand situation. Uh, and here we want to well, improve this model to uh, also uh, consider the stochasticity or uncertainty. But we have decision variables here. One is the Q, order size, and another is the reorder point, the R. And uh, in the deterministic case, this, uh, this R is very easy to calculate, but now we have two variables which in practice are independent of each other. We need to calculate the value of Q, but also the value of R, which will give the optimal strategy. And then this R is chosen to protect against uncertainty of demand during the lead time, and the Q is chosen to balance the holding cost and the setup or ordering cost, as usual. Because if you have a high reorder point, then, of course, you can just raise this uh, graph here, and then the probability of, decking, uh, of, of getting a stockout will be very low. But if you have a low reorder point, the probability of getting a stockout will be pretty high. But what is also decided about the reorder point is the size of the safety stock. And the safety stock is defined to be the average level of the stock when you receive a new order. So here you have an average level, which is called the safety stock, and you have the traditional cyclic um, inventory cost on top of the, the cost for keeping a, uh, keep, keeping a safety stock. So here it's another way to just to show this uh, figure here. We have the Q, which is the order size, and you have the R, which is the reorder point. And the time between the order is placed and the order is arrived is called the lead time, or here the denoted as the Greek letter tau. So now we will have to define the cost function for this situation. And we remember that for when we developed the EOQ formula, we had a cost function which uh, consisted of the uh, setup or ordering cost and also the holding cost. And we found some kind of balance between these two cost uh, types. When we talked about uh, discounts, we also included the purchase cost because the unit cost was different and it was dependent on the size of the queue. Uh, so here uh, we have different types of situations and we need to decide which types of costs which is relevant in each situation here. So let's now look at the relevant cost in this case, where you have a continuous review, QR, lot size reorder point system, and you have a stochastic or uncertain demand. We still have the holding cost, and we have the setup cost, and also we have the cost, the penalty cost, when you are, are getting a, a stock out. So, we can first look at the setup cost. And then the setup cost or ordering cost. Well, this will be similar as usual because we have a demand, we have an average demand rate. And we can use that one to find uh, the number of orders in one year or in one certain given time period. And then the ordering cost will be the number of orders multiplied by the cost for placing one order. So this one is uh, still quite, uh, uh, quite easy to find. Number of orders, which is the total demand divided by the order size and multiplied by the cost, the K parameter, the cost for placing one order. So this is pretty uh, still quite simple. 
Now we also need to find the holding cost and we can look at the cyclic inventory cost first. Cyclic inventory is defined to be the inventory cost excluded of the safety stock. The safety stock can be calculated by itself when you know the value or the, the average size of the stock when you receive a new order. The cyclic inventory cost is what we have used in the deterministic uh, uh, models. It will be the average size of the order size of uh, one half Q and multiplied by the holding cost. Holding cost can be noted as the H or we can find it by multiplying the cost by the internal interest rate. Uh, multiplying the, the value or the, the C parameter uh, and, and the internal interest rate. And then we also need to include the safety stock. And now the safety stock will be the difference between the reorder point the R value and the average demand in the lead time. This is what will decide how many items you will have on stock on average for every cycle. So sometimes you will have more, sometimes you will have less, but on average you will find a value which will describe the safety stock. And the safety stock will then be the S value uh, which is the real point minus <coughs> reorder point minus the demand in the lead time demand here as the lambda and the lead time as the tau using Greek letter. This is the safety stock and finding the cost of the safety stock then you have to multiply it by the H value like this. So safety stock is denoted as the S defined to be the reorder <laughs> point minus the demand in the lead time which is the average demand in the lead time following the average rate and multiplied by the cost per item of storing uh, one item. And then we need to find also the third part which is the penalty cost. And then the penalty cost for a stockout can be denoted as the expected number of stockouts per time unit and multiplied by the penalty cost as uh, measured in, uh, uh, in some kind of, of currency. So here we have one function which we will try to describe later but we can assume, uh, well, define it uh, as the n of R, where R is the reorder point. This will be the expected number of stockouts and the, um, to find the penalty cost we should now also multiply it by the number of cycles in one year found the same way, the total demand for one year divided by the order size Q and then we have to multiply it by the penalty. So now the N of R will be the expected number of stockouts in one cycle with a given reorder point R and of course if you have a high reorder point then the expected number of stockouts will be small. If you have a low reorder point then the expected number of stockouts will be rather and then you have a given penalty f 
per unit, which is a fee or whatever, uh, what you have to pay or some kind of cost that will occur if you get a uh, stock out. <coughs> so now we have three different types of costs. Uh, well, if we inventory cost can also be split in both the, the cyclic inventory and the safety stock. So we can now define the cost function here as the G for a given Q value, but now we have actually two different variables, both the Q and the R. So we have a function with two variables. And then the cost function consists of the setup cost. Plus the holding cost or inventory cost, which can be denoted as uh, one half Q plus R minus the demand in the lead time. multiplied by the holding cost per unit, cost of storing one unit of inventory. And then we also have to add the penalty cost. Number of cycles multiplied by the expected number of stockouts in one cycle, the n of r function, and multiplied by the penalty, the cost per unit of a stockout. So, the objective now will be to choose the Q and the R, which will give us a, s a smallest possible value on the cost function. So here we have the cost function, like I have shown in the blackboard, and we will interpret the N of R to the expected number of stock costs per cycle given by the loss integral formula. We'll come back to that in a short while. Uh, we have the standardized loss integral values also in a table in the textbook. And then we can find formulas here for the optimal values of Q and R that will minimize the total cost. And we can use the two formulas here. They are found by deriving this function first with respect to Q, and then with respect to R. And I will not go into details in the, uh, well, how we are, kind of, uh, well, we are deriving the formulas, and I will not go into details in the derivation here. If you continue on master level, we also have to analyze it and, uh, and, uh, and uh, show the details of, of derivations. But here, we can assume that, well, we, we actually know that this is correctly uh, derived because these formulas are proven to be correct. And we have an optimal Q value found by this formula. And we can see that this part is very, well, this part is exactly the same as the E of Q function. 2 multiplied by lambda and k divided by h. But now we also have this part here added to the E of Q function within the, the square root sign here p, the penalty, and n of r, the expected number of stockouts with a given r value. And similar, if we derive this formula with respect to r, we can find the expression shown here, 1 minus f of r, where f is still the cumulative probability with a given r value shown in the normal distribution table, uh, now in the normal distribution uh, curve here, as the area up to this particular r value. The probability, the f of r, is the probability of getting an outcome which is smaller than r. And then, of course, 1 minus f of r will be the probability of getting a stock out, which is the area 
higher than r in this probability curve. Now we have two formulas here, formed by deriving the g function, the cost function. Uh, but we can see that each of the formula will depend on the value on the other. The q value will depend on the r value, and 1 minus f of r will depend on the q value. So still, even if we have the expressions here, we need to do some calculations to find the optimal combination. <coughs> and the way to solve this is actually to, so to, to find the solution here is to solve these two formulas every other time with a new and updated value on the Q and on the R. And then we need to start somewhere and then we can actually use the very simple EOQ formula as a pretty good approximation for the Q. So now, well, we have shown how this cost function is found by adding the relevant part or the relevant cost uh, types here, ordering, penalty, and two types of inventory cost, defining the cost function, deriving the cost function, and setting the derived function to zero and solve with respect to the two variables here, either the q or actually 1 minus f of r, which is this area, which also will make it pretty easy to find the exact value of the reorder point r. So let's now go through the example from the textbook, page 270. And by experience, I know that solving these types of problems are well, usually quite difficult. So we should go through this example quite uh, thoroughly on, uh, on well, this lecture. And also, we might have to continue next week. <coughs> yeah, The formula is the same as uh, we have on the slide there. So we just erase everything. Um, we have yeah, example 5.4 on page 270, and we can first try to read the text and find the values of the variables, try to identify, this is quite important when you are solving assignments and exam problems too, read through the text quite thoroughly and identify the values of the parameters that you should use. And here we have a cost of this item of 10. We have an interest rate of 20%, which also makes it easy to find the holding cost, which is C multiplied by R by I, which is 0 0.2 multiplied by 10, which is 2. It will cost $2 to store one item in one year. Since this is the interest rate per year. We also have a lead time in this case of six months. The tau value, it takes six months to get a new shipment. It might be by boat from Asia or whatever. It takes six months to get a new delivery. And we have a penalty cost. If you have a stock out, you will have a cost of 25, either by a fee to pay or by some lost uh, goodwill or found some, somewhere else. But here we will assume that we have a penalty, which is calculated to be 25. And we also have an ordering cost, which is 50. So each order will cost $50. And you have a demand rate in the lead time. And we know that the lead time is six months. So here the demand rate or the sigma is 100 per 
lead time, which is six months, which makes that which makes two hundred per year. Calculated to be in the uh, standard time unit, which is one year. What is important is that the demand here, 200, uh, should be given in the same time unit as the holding cost or the in holding cost also formed by, by the interest rate here. So if you, are uh, if you are dealing with an interest rate per year, you also need to calculate the demand given as a, as a rate demand rate per year. Also, we have information that the standard deviation here is 25. And this is given, probably found by analyzing historical data. So now, this is the values of the variables on this particular example. And we will now try to find the optimal combination of Q, order size, and R, the reorder point. So first, we start trying to get an, well, uh, a starting value, an initial value of the order size. And then, when we have one particular value of Q, we can try to solve this formula. Find the probability of getting a stock out and the corresponding value of the reorder point. And when we have this value, we can also find the expected number of stockouts, which can be used in the formula here to update the value of Q. When we have a new value of Q, we will solve this formula again, and we will just continue solving the formulas every other time until we get the same value in two consecutive iterations. And then we can conclude, because then, and, and if we do this correctly, you will end up with the same value within a quite few iterations. It doesn't usually take a long time until you are getting the same values here. So let's now first start with a Q value. Use the EOQ formula, which is a quite good approximation. Always a good approximation to use the EOQ formula, even if you have a more a bit more complex problem. But here, the Q0, using the E of Q formula. And we will find a starting value of 100. Using an order size of 100 can be a quite good approximation to start with. OK, now we have a Q value. 100, and we can use the next formula, which is down below on the uh, on this uh, slide, and we can see that one minus f of let's call that r zero, which is now the start value for the reorder point, can be found by using the formula shown here. Now we will use the Q0, 100, multiplied by the, ordering the, the holding cost H, which is 2, divided by the penalty, which is given to be 25, and the lambda, which is the demand per year, 200. This gives us a value of uh, 0.04. And we know 0.04, 4% will now be the probability of getting a stock out. The area below this particular curve, when you get a higher demand in the lead time than this particular real time. That is what will decide if you have a stock out or not. So now is the problem to find out for which reorder point do we have a 4% probability of getting a stock out. And then we go back to the normal distribution, but now we actually 
do not look at table A1, but we rather will look at the table A4, which is also in the back of the textbook. This is also based on the normal distribution. It is another way to show the normal distribution. Because here, we still are talking about C values. We have probabilities. And we have also this column here, which is called the partial expectations. Uh, which we'll come back to, uh, to in, a, in a short while. But now, first we are looking for the value of 0 0.04. And we are looking for, in this column, 1 minus f of t, since this is the formula we are using, 1 minus the cumulative probability for a given outcome. We are looking for the value 0 0.04. Then we have to go down. And now we should start to get closer here. 0.04 here, 0.04 all one, very close, at a C value of 1.75. So here, this probability will be found at a C value in the uh, normal distribution table of 1.75. And now we can use the same uh, way as we, we did with the normal with the, the news by problem to identify the reorder point. So the exact value for the reorder point, which will give a probability of getting a stock out of four percent, will be the expected demand in the lead time multiplied now plus the standard deviation and multiplied by the C value, which is expected demand in the lead time is 100, six months, which is the lead time, and you have a demand of 100 in the lead time, plus the standard deviation, which is given to be 25, and multiplied by the C value of 1.75. Gives us an R value of 144. <coughs> so the policy so far, we are not done yet, but we have a, well, a policy uh, which is to order 100 items, the current level of Q, current value of Q, when you have a number of 144 items left on stock. R value of 144. <coughs> so this is the policy so far. But now we can go back to the formulas here because we see that we should use the formula here to update the Q value. And then we need to know about this n of r function, expected number of stockouts. And to find that one, we can use a formula which is still, we are using the standard deviation. The standard deviation is very essential in these calculations here because it will tell you about the variance of, the, uh, uh, of this probability distribution. And this one should be multiplied by what we call the standardized loss function, denoted as the L of t. And this one can be found in the table here. We have identified 1.75 as the t value, and here we have a column for these so-called partial expectations, or also called the standardized loss function. 0 0.0162. Standard deviation, 25. 
and the standardized loss function or the partial expectation in the normal distribution table A4 is 0 0.0162 which means if you calculate this that you get a value of 0 0.405 And this is the expected number of stockouts when you are using a reorder point, which now is calculated to be 144. So if you're using this policy, ordering, placing a new order when you have 144 items left on stock, you will have an expected number of stockouts of 0 0.405 for each cycle which is not much. And here, well, looking at this, you can see that in this cycle, you don't have a stockout at all. In this cycle, you have a stockout, small one, maybe one or two. In the next cycle, you don't know, but in average, you will have a stockout of 0 0.405 when you are ordering, placing a new order when you have 144 left on stock. So now we have a value also for this parameter or this function and we can use the formula formula shown here to update the value of Q <coughs> because now we are talking about Q1 we had a Q0 100 we will update this value and then we use the formula here 2 lambda multiplied by k plus p and n of r divided by h. And we have all these parameters now. We have the lambda, 200 per year. We have the k, 50, for placing an order. We have the penalty, which is 25. And we have the expected number of stockouts, which is 0 0.405. And of course, we also have the holding cost of $2 for storing one item of inventory for one year. Calculating this, we can update this value of Q and get the Q1 value, which is 110. Which is different from the previous one. So we are not done yet. We started with an order size of 100, now we have increased it to 110, but we have to continue and then we need to find the value of the 1 minus f of r when you are using a q value of 110. So here, 1 minus f of r1, which is the value we should find now, is dependent on the q1. All the other parameters are the same, but now we are using 110 instead of 100. And we will get a value which is 0 0.044, which is slightly different from the previous one go into the normal distribution table again, find the closest value of 0 0.044. We remember we was at 1.75 and now we actually have to go up here to find the closest value of 1.70. So now that Z value will be 1.70. Um, the R1 will be found by using the expected demand in the lead time, which is 100, plus the standard deviation of 25, multiplied by 1.70, which now will give us a new value, which is 143, as I remember, which is different from the previous one. So still we have to continue. And then we can also easily calculate the expected number of stockouts, 
when you have an R1 value ordering at 100, a level of 143. Then we have the standard deviation, 25 as usual. And we have to look in the column for the partial expectations here for the t value of 1.70. And now we have 0 0.0183. And we have to update Zero point zero one eight three, and we will get a new value of the expected number of stockouts, which now will be zero point four five seven five. <coughs> which we again should use to update the Q value. All the other parameters here are the same except for this one, which we now need to use the new value found here. And we will find a new value of Q, which is 111. Still not the same as the previous one. We're getting closer and closer. But now we need to use 111 in this formula to update the reorder point and the cumulative probability of getting a stock out with that reorder point. And we will actually, in the next iteration, find that we get a C value of 1.71, as I remember. Or we will actually end up with the same C value, and then we can stop here. So when you get the same value in two iterations after each other, then you can conclude. And the optimal policy here will be to order 111 items when you have a total of uh, 143 on stock. So this is the way to solve these problems. Try to solve each formula or each calculation once, use the value you will find to update the value on the other parameters, and then use that one in the first formula again. And then at last, you will end up with a conclusion when you get the same result two times in a row. We're not completely finished with this yet. I will continue next week. Uh, also, assignment number three, you will have uh, one problem, uh, as I remember, problem two, will uh, treat first the new newsboy problem and then this QR model. So you also have to, to solve this yourself in, in the assignment. Okay, we'll continue next week. And then after we've finished with this part, we will continue on lot sizing models in, in uh, chapter seven. <coughs>